Thank you. Well, Lindsey Graham is a Republican from South Carolina who serves on the Senate Armed Services and Judiciary Committees. And uh, that is the question. Where are the votes, Senator? Are you behind this uh, McConnell-Reed plan? Well, I don't know what it is, but I cannot imagine any plan passing through the House and the Senate that doesn't cut the government equal to what you raise the debt. So this idea of a $1.5 trillion dollar reduction to get the debt ceiling raised is a non-starter because you, between now and next November, you need to borrow over two trillion. So I can't see how any Republican who got elected in 2010 could ever vote for a plan that doesn't cut the government at least equal to what you raise the debt ceiling by. They're calling this the last resort plan. Well, the last resort is to do the right thing. And if, let's have a balanced budget amendment of the Constitution. We don't have the discipline in Congress to balance the budget. How can you get this far in debt uh, without having a structural problem. So a balanced budget amendment would amend the Constitution. Yes, it would. We've done that 27 times. The last time, ironically, I believe in 1992, it had to do with congressional pay. So, so why now, after all the decades this government has been operating, why now do we need to Because this after all the decades, we have gotten 14.45 trillion dollars in debt. I see no hope without discipline. The balanced budget amendment of the Constitution will give us discipline we can't muster among ourselves. After 40 years, how much more evidence do you need to suggest that the Congress is incapable of balancing the budget on their own? So the balanced budget amendment to our Constitution would make us do what 49 of the 50 states have to do, which is to balance the budget. And without this structural change, we're just going to keep running up the debt. So balanced budget, right? Mm -hmm. you, you spend. Cut, cap and balance. You spend. What, what you take in, right? Yeah. It has to be about. Does that mean that you have to raise taxes, though? Because we can cut spending, but we're going to still need revenue to it, balance that spending, whatever it is. It means you have a debate about how to balance the budget. I believe, quite frankly, we can grow our way out of this mess by having entrepreneurial programs in place to grow the economy. Now's not the time to raise taxes. But if you had a balanced budget amendment of the Constitution, we'd have to sit down and talk with each other about how to get there. So and you'd be open to it? Oh, I, the only way, yeah, I'd be open to talking to anybody about how to get to the, the uh, we don't raise taxes, that's not the answer. The White House, the mm -hmm. budget director, says this is about a balanced budget amendment. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, Jack Lew. It puts in place spending limitations that would force us to cut Social Security and Medicare more deeply. Social Security and Medicare are going bankrupt. The balanced budget amendment limits government spending to 18% of GDP. Over the last 40 years, it's been 18%. I'm willing to negotiate a different number, but I'm not willing to pass on the current system without change. No rational person could ever believe that this Congress, Republican or Democrat, is ever going to balance their budget until you have some discipline in the system that's missing today. Word is you don't have the vote, so balanced budget amendment in the House or the Senate. Well, we got the people behind us. Seventy-two percent of the American people want a balanced budget amendment of the Constitution. Republicans, Democrats, and independents have come to conclude that their politicians will never balance the budget unless somebody makes them and the Constitution is the way to do it. And to any plan that goes through the Congress that doesn't cut spending equal to the amount you raise the debt has no chance of passing. The president says if we don't get some sort of agreement in place by Friday, mm -hmm. that we're going to pass through that August deadline. And that's, that could lead to a default. We have all the different scenarios. Let me just ask you a broader yeah. question about sure. government. Sure. Are, is, this, is this government truly at work? Are we actually seeing government working with the debates that are happening uh, and, and the opinions that are being floated out there? Or is what happening with the debt ceiling just an example of government dysfunction? Well, no, this is a democracy in action. But what you see is the 2010 election message being lost. If 2010 was about anything, it was about limiting the size and scope of government. So this whole debate is to see how politicians can raise the debt limit without having to make really hard choices. We, we avoid those really hard choices because we're worried about our next election. That's why you need a balanced budget amendment of the Constitution where we could go back and tell people we had to do something about Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid because we just can't get there from here without changing those programs. But if you don't get that amendment, which would be a big thing and the states would have to ratify it, yeah. then what's the backup plan? I think, the, I think the, the backup plan is to get the country out of debt, is not to pass on to the next generation a debt they can't afford to pay. This is a time in history for the Republican Party and the Democratic Party to listen to the public. 72% of the people want us to balance the budget by having an amendment to our Constitution. And any idea that's presented by politicians that grows the debt is going to be rejected because the last election was a signal to all of us 
get our country back on sound footing. We're going to become Greece sooner rather than later. We've got more debt than the next generation can pay. We've got $51 trillion of unfunded liability in Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. We've got $14 trillion worth of debt. We borrow 40 cents of every dollar we spend. That is insanity, and it has to stop. And here's my point. If you do the same old thing and you expect different results, that's crazy. So I'm not going to do the same old thing. Now's the time to make fundamental change. Senator Graham, nice to have you on set with Thank us you. today. A pleasure. A rare occurrence. We're usually talking to you in D.C. We look forward to talking to you again, as Thank always. You.